Cushing uh, Gavin Award of the evening. Tonight's Cushing Gavin Labor Attorney Awardee is Susan Horwitz, partner Sanduli Grace. Susan has been a strong and effective advocate for the Boston Police Patrolmen's Association, BPPA, the Mass Coalition of uh, Police, Mass Cops, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW, Local 1228 Broadcasting Workers, and more. She has won victories through the uh, Massachusetts Appeals Court, Labor Relations Commission, arbitrations, and contract negotiations. Susan grew up in Coney Island, Brooklyn, in a politically active family, with her father uh, serving on the New York City Council for over 20 years. I would think politics and representing public servants are in her blood. Susan first entered the legal field as an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer legal in Tacoma, Washington. She then worked for five years in personnel and labor relations at the U.S. Department of Labor in New York City, where she bargained with the American Federation of Government Employees, AFGE. Susan and her very charming husband, Jim Cooper, who won the Cushing Gavin Boyle Award in 2013, are the only, only the third married couple to both win the CGA. They share a fierce dedication to the labor management community. Susan has tremendous energy and passion for the law in all aspects of life. Chris Broderick, Secretary of the Boston Patrolman, Police Patrolmen's Association, encapsulated this energy when he says, I do not know the words that would quantify the qualities of integrity, dedication, intelligence, and drive in Susan Horwitz. Members of the Patrolman's Union overwhelmingly affirm Susan is a teacher to everyone she encounters, handling difficulties and nuances of her work with grace and an unceasing dedication to the dual goals of empowering and grounding public servants. The Labor Guild is proud to honor Susan Horwitz with the 2016 Cushing Gavin Labor Attorney Award for Excellence, exemplifying integrity and competence as a gifted attorney, a deft negotiator, and a strong advocate serving her clients, her firm, and the labor management process with tremendous skill, devotion, and a passion for justice. Susan? rough crowd, but uh, I want to thank the Labor Guild for this wonderful honor. I've had the opportunity to work with the Guild since the 1980s and over the years to participate in its wonderful labor education program. The Labor Group Guild is truly a beacon of positive, collaborative energy at a time of so much negativity in this country. I wish the Labor Guild another meaningful 50 plus years of educating, empowering, working men and women, and fighting for social justice. I'm generally more comfortable talking about issues like pay parity, uh, first responder stipends, the Quinn Bill, and of course my favorite topic recently, body-worn cameras for police officers. So I thought maybe I should make an educational presentation tonight, like Joe Sanduli would do. Uh, but then I realized that most people in Boston, and certainly my clients, the Boston Patrolmen, don't really want to hear about com body cameras anymore. So I decided I would talk about me. <laughs> now most people talk about the influence of their parents and family, and I'm no different. 
Um, in particular, my parents have been my primary inspiration. My father, Sam, grew up in a small town in Connecticut. And at the time, in the 1920s and 30s, as a religious Jew, he was bullied and ostracized. He would describe to me how poorly he was treated by the kids in his neighborhood when they would tease him because on Fridays, he had to carry a live chicken across town to the rabbi to have it blessed before it was killed for Friday night dinner. This stayed with my father his whole life and made him a man who respected all people. When he was a member of the New York City Council in the 1980s, he was chairman of the General, Wel General Welfare Committee. My father worked with then Mayor Ed Koch in New York City to shepherd the New York City Gay Rights Bill through the City Council. Prior chairman had worked to block the council from even voting on the bill. When my dad was asked by religious Jewish constituents who were not supportive of the bill and who in fact picketed in front of my parents' house why he would work to pass this bill, he explained that he knew what it was like to be discriminated against and that he would fight to end discrimination in any way he could. These were the kind of messages of fairness and inclusion that both my parents instilled in me, and I've been very proud to carry forward in my life and my work as a labor lawyer. At Sanduli Grace, we represent a variety of union clients, including many police unions. We've got Mass Coalition of Police up here, We've got the Boston Patrolman down there. I have to tell you, I relish daily the challenges and rewards of representing these men and women who serve and protect us all every day. The police officers are a population that most people just take for granted and unfortunately enjoy criticizing. This is despite the fact that when trouble pays us a visit, the first ones we all call are the police. I'm also very humbled knowing that I'm receiving this award tonight as a result of being nominated by one of my clients. It's one thing to work hard to effectively represent your clients, but it's also so much more to know that you're valued and respected. One of the wonderful assets of being a union labor lawyer is the opportunity to represent union clients over many years and even decades, to see them through good times and not so good times. I'm proud to call all these clients my friends. We work hard together, we fight hard together, and we're there for each other. I've also represented IBW Local 1228, which is up here, that represents broadcast technicians also for over 30 years. I'm so very pleased at our recent victory at the NLRB, where we established that freelance workers are statutory em employees under the Act and not independent contractors. The union then handily won the election and is now bargaining for its first contract. I also want to give a shout out to the MTA. I don't know where they are here today. But the job that the MTA did in working to defeat question two and beating back the expansion of charter schools That was inspirational. I have to tell you that if the MTA had been running the Clinton campaign in Pennsylvania or Florida, we would be watching a very different transition in Washington today. Of course, I also want to acknowledge all the wonderful people that I work with at Sanduli Grace. Every day they challenge me to think in creative ways to help our clients and inspire me with their daily devotion and commitment. I also want to thank my family that's here tonight. My brother came in from Philadelphia, and several of my cousins are here. My husband, James Cooper, is a prior recipient of the Boyle Award. He had knee replacement sur surgery last week, but he would miss tonight for anything. Thank you, Jim.
Our children, Phoebe and Will, are sitting right there. And earlier I mentioned how much I've learned from my parents. But family learning is also learning from our children. We should all be open to such learning and growth. They have taught me to be more patient and empathetic. This has not only helped me to be a better person, but it makes me a more understanding and sensitive lawyer. Finally, if I can get your attention for a minute, I have a small audience activity. I recently read that we can all increase our social resilience by shaking hands with people that we meet. Apparently, shaking hands with someone for six seconds raises each person's oxytocin levels. Oxytocin is often called the love hormone or the hug hormone. So shaking hands makes you biochemically primed to like and want to help the person whose hand you have shaken. Therefore, I now try to start any bargaining session by shaking everybody's hands. So please, let's spread this good feeling and I would like you all to shake hands with somebody that's sitting near you for six seconds. And let's all enjoy the positive feeling from that. Thank you all very much.